Rev up your engine! Now let's face it, if you want a truck for the post-apocalyptic era, or perhaps zombie invasion, you couldn't go wrong with this 2004 Toyota Tacoma SR5. The owner himself has done the mods, the big lights on the top, this cool crenulated paint job. He did it all himself. This crenulated paint is just the thing for this truck. Now, it's an oldie, but it's a goodie. He even has this apocalyptic tool on his keychain in case something happens. You get inside this thing. Usual, got a worn seat, plastic's cracked, but guess what? It still runs like a clock. It's almost got 200,000, 199,018 miles. That's a typical Toyota Tacoma. Starts right up, still has freezing cold AC. Any utilitarian inside, we'll go to the back. Still got some decent room in the back seat. And this has got the camper top on it. So, you got a lot of storage space here. And if the apocalypse comes, what the heck? You can live inside this thing if you wanted to. Now this thing started out as a Tacoma pre-runner, but he's modified various things. But unfortunately for this model, it's not all-wheel drive. It may look it, but you can see. You could make it all-wheel drive with a lot of modifications, but this particular one is just rear-wheel drive. So in this case, it's a lot more fierce looking than it actually is. It isn't all-wheel drive. You would want an all-wheel drive one if you're getting ready for the apocalypse, if zombies were chasing you, but this is a good urban vehicle here. Solid transmission can last forever. And as we open the hood, you can see it's got the venerable 3400 4 cam 24 valve v6 toyota engine legendary for long life now it's not a racehorse it puts out 190 horsepower heavy vehicles but it's a lot more horsepower than the four cylinder which is only 140. so by no stretch of the imagination is this a racing truck but it's not supposed to be it's got decent acceleration for something this heavy guess mod just want to get 16 in town it's about 19 on the highway yeah it's a big engine, it's a big truck. It's not going to get phenomenal gas mods. That isn't what you buy something like this for. As you can see, he's lifted it some. It's got good clearance. You're not going to get stuck. And he's made it solid. Metal bumper, not that cheap plastic crap. Now the back is stock, but that's metal too. That's just plastic covering so you don't slip. Now it comes to towing, this baby can tow up to 5,000 pounds. So you can pull a reasonable amount of stuff. Maybe supplies if the zombies are coming after you. These are ruggedly built. You can see this one. 17 years old. Yet, it's still solid as can be. Now some of the Toyotas did have problems with their frames in the Tacomas. But this particular one, check it out. The frame is like new. It's not rotten. Only a few of them had that problem. This one definitely does not. If you look under here, you can see big old transmission, solid drive shaft, even a shielded gas tank so it doesn't get damaged. Now it's particularly one was put together in Baja, California, Mexico. Not U.S., Mexico. They also made some of them in San Antonio. But the key word here is put together. Engines, transmissions, they still come from Japan. They're just put together there. And this particular one, I don't see any problems from it being made in Mexico. If you watched the video I made a few weeks ago, I had another customer with one. And it looked like a brand new car, even though it was 13 years old. It was a red Tacoma. And that thing still ran like a clock. And really, when it comes down to it, nobody cares that much about fit and finish on a truck like this. Oh, maybe the gaps aren't the same everywhere. Who cares? It's a pickup truck. It's a utilitarian vehicle. And you can see the way he's fixed it up. It's very utilitarian. You don't have to wax it with that crenulated covering. <laughs> he added the steps on, bolted them on. Put the LED lights on. Changed the front grill and stuff to make it look cooler. There is one humongous aftermarket for these things. And they're not that expensive, the parts, either. On my son's Tacoma, I bought it with a rotten out rear bumper. I got one for $99, chrome plated. Seven years later, still looks fantastic. You can get parts for these things, dirt cheap, and you can modify it all the while understanding. It's a Toyota, can last a long time. It won't be like guys that put a bunch of money in a vehicle, then the engine or the transmission blows up. Personally, I have never, ever seen an automatic transmission one of these things go out. They are solid built, rear wheel drive vehicles. Being an automatic, you don't have to worry about burning the clutch out and having to replace clutches on it. They are solid units. Being a Toyota, of course it starts right up. You gotta climb up a little because he raised it. 
key's a little sticky. That's what happens on the old. It really needs a new key, but away we go. Now he's raised it so it's a little bit higher up in the air. A lot of guys want that in the truck. And you can hear smooth shift and transmission. And even though it's been lifted, it doesn't ride all that bad. And I'm amazed at this one. This all still works and goes up and down. It hasn't cracked yet. Normally they crack. Now, as I said, it is not a race machine. But we'll see how fast it can take off. Got it in drive. Here we go. It doesn't throw you back in the seat, of course. But you can see it goes. It still shifts extremely smoothly with almost 200,000 miles. It is not a race truck, but it's a very dependable work truck. And let's face it, if you're running from the zombies, they can't go that fast anyway. <laughs> what you want is dependability, which is what this has. Here, if you listen closely, you can hear a little wind whistle, various cracks here and there. But hey, it still goes down the road. And yeah, the steering's getting a little sloppy because of age, and truthfully, because it was raised up in the air. But it still feels extremely secure riding around in this thing. There's the wind. All in all, it's a very solid built vehicle. Perfect when the zombies or remaining few of the apocalypse are chasing after each other. They made a lot of them. There's a lot of them lying around. You can get spare parts all over the place. And with this color scheme, you can hide in the dark. Well, you have to paint over the Toyota. That shines out a little bit too much. But the rest of it is just black. You can hide away in it, in the brush, awaiting whatever you've got planned. Knowing that when it's time to start it up, it will start and it will go. And the transmission isn't going to break. It runs fine on the cheapest gasoline you can buy. Or in the case of the apocalypse, that you can find somewhere. You can turn the back into a little hotel or a storage area for the various things you might need to survive the apocalypse. And if you have to haul stuff, 5,000 pounds, you can pull behind it. Or in the real world, Maybe you just want to go fishing. So now you know the truth about this old Tacoma that was assembled in Mexico. Could be the perfect post-apocalyptic vehicle if the world comes to that. And here's some bonus questions and answers. A newcomer says, any idea the best cars, SUVs, or vans for three to four brand? My sister-in-law is looking for it. She has three kids. So hopefully a larger car and our SUV van. All right. She's looking to spend three to four. That's one of the hardest good vehicles to find. You can forget SUVs and vans. They're all going to be way over that if they're good. Plenty of American used ones, but they're piles of junk when they're that age and you don't want one of those. My advice would be three to four grand. Try to find an old Toyota Camry. They have a lot of room inside and that can last a really long time. Now it's going to have to be an older one, three to four grand, but they can last so long. Start looking for that. If you live in an area where there's a lot of older people, if you can find an old Mercury Grand Marquis or Lincoln's, an old Lincoln or uh, Crown Victoria. What the heck? Those things can last forever and they're huge inside and an older one isn't going to go for that much money and with the big V8 engines they can last a long time. But for long life and money size you're better off trying to find an older Camry that's still in good shape. I had a guy buy one the other day. He had 130,000 miles. He paid three grand and it was a decent car. Yeah, so look for that. Road Trip 72 says, I have parasitic battery drain on my van and I paid a mechanic 700 bucks and he said it was the sliding door and he put a new electronic assembly on it, but it still drains. Could I just put a switch on there to turn it off? And then when I want to use the door, flip the switch. Sure, go right ahead if you want to do that. On the other hand, I demand my 700 bucks back from that guy because he didn't fix your car. He said it was going to fix it and it didn't. He didn't test it right. You have parasitic drain. I test it with my equipment. I see there's parasitic drain. If I think I fixed that drain, guess what I do? I retest the system. And if it still shows parasitic drain, I know it's not fixed. The guy you used was an idiot. He didn't retest it, said it was fixed when it wasn't fixed. You should get your money back from him. That's his fault for bad diagnosis and bad repair. But yeah, anytime you get a short, you can put a toggle switch. I made a video on that on Acura that a customer had. The dash computer stuff was all acting up. So all I did was put a toggle switch in. When they wanted it, they flipped the switch. And when they shut the car off, they flipped the switch off. Simple fix, rather than spending $1,500 up to change out computer modules. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.